Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we're going to continue our conversation on the Mars and Venus energies as they reach conjunction on February 13th at 14 degrees of Capricorn and continue traveling together into March where they both enter Aquarius on March 6th and 7th and continue into Aquarius together and eventually Around the middle of March, Venus moves ahead of Mars in Aquarius. So we have a very strong conjunction between these two personal planets, Mars and Venus, and their energy together signifies a new alignment that we are achieving and experiencing. So in today's show, we're going to talk more about these energies as I did begin this topic on the January 31st Monday podcast. And now we're going to go a little bit more into some of these themes and energies, as well as how you can self-evaluate what has shifted for you within relationships and more specifically within the dynamics between your own masculine and feminine energies. As Mars is connected to the archetypes of masculine energy, just as Venus is connected to the archetypes of feminine energy. We all have these energies within ourselves. We have them in different expressions, consciousness, and awareness levels within ourselves. But as Mars and Venus travel together through this exact conjunction for a number of weeks, there is greater significance here to this alignment, this integration, and the elevation of these energies. Now, we're going to discuss this in terms of relationships, as I know that is something very important to many of you. And I'm going to say how it's important to evaluate your own internal masculine and internal feminine energies as this is what is within you. And I know that as I say that, many of you are like, I'm so tired of talking about my inner masculine, my inner feminine. I don't want the internal focus anymore. I want the external purpose the external manifestation, the external person to show up. But even though you may be tired of the discussion of the internal energies, part of understanding our own evolution and energy is that we're always in charge of managing these parts of ourselves. And the further and higher we go into higher frequencies, this will always be the case. So much of elevating relationships is based on what we've elevated within ourselves, what we have moved away from or transitioned out of, what we have learned from through our experiences, through our own connections to other people that then show us what we've been healing, what we've been learning. So I realize that you might be really tired of focusing on the internal masculine, internal feminine, but it is going to be part of our ongoing assignment because what you always have control over is your own energy. That is your mastery. That is your domain. And in fact, in Capricorn, these themes are highlighted because there's energy with Capricorn about a peak, a peak understanding, really going to a higher perspective of what you have been through. Capricorn relates to the years we've put into something, the experiences we've accumulated, what we have understood along the way, even through the hard knocks, the heartbreaks, the challenges. Capricorn is about going into this top tier perspective of your own patterns, healing experiences in relationships, what you have learned through your own energy and what you're able to master because of these experiences. So this is where, again, we are our own teacher and our own student. We are understanding what relationship cycles you've been in, what has been really pivotal and big for you, what has shown you more of yourself to the point that it's perhaps been a catalyst for wanting something new and different, wanting a new experience of relationships, wanting a different way that you show up. And that's also a Capricorn phrase, how you show up in the world, how you show up as yourself, how you show up and interact with other people. So there is a maturity here with this conjunction of Mars and Venus, and there's also responsibility. There's also discernment and understanding where to put your energy and where not to. So there's a very interesting dance here 
in Mars Venus conjunction because these are the lovers. These are the energies of masculine and feminine coming together. And at this time on the planet with all the big energies and with all the Capricorn themes we've been discussing, this is where there can be new harmony, new balance, new alignment, a new sense of being on the same page, clarity, direction, even a sense of patience because Capricorn goes slow, takes its time, assesses the realistic qualities of everything, and then decides what to focus on and move towards next. So there is a slowness to this energy that brings us into our own timelines, our own understanding of where is my energy going? Is this a good choice for me? Is this a good decision? Is this a good direction? This is not fast moving energy, but it can be very concrete and very clear on what direction to take. Now, the other thing about Mars and Venus in Capricorn is that this is the energy of not only mastering yourself, mastering your own masculine and feminine energies, but also understanding what you are no longer wanting to participate in, what you're no longer wanting to contribute to, and where you do not want your energy to show up. Because the Capricorn energy, when it's focused and clear, it heads off in a direction that has a purpose. And what I'm feeling here is that as these two come in alignment, in Capricorn, you could have an understanding of what you no longer want to do in relationships, meaning you've been through enough cycles, enough healing, enough karma, enough turmoil, enough of all the things that have been very intense healing and very much about the 3D energy frequencies. We're in the 3D there's a lot that we move through to understand our own energy and our own potentials. So then you connect with certain people in certain relationships because you're learning lessons together. You're completing cycles together. You're finishing off karma together. There's something you're seeing in yourself that maybe was repressed or held back that your consciousness wants you to see and to claim your power in. There's a lot in the 3D dynamics that can have these intense emotions energies in them. And it can also feel like you can only go so far with some people, meaning the relationship potential only goes so far. And that comes down to many factors, but especially free will and what someone is choosing in terms of their own growth in their own direction and what they're ready to do in relationships, meaning how they're able to connect and show up. And so some of these 3D energies, they really fall away. They feel maybe worn out. It can feel like they're no longer satisfying or interesting to you. It could feel like they're very familiar, almost formulaic. So 3D relationships can feel formulaic because you've been down the path and you know what happens or how this is going to play out for your energy. Because again, all you can be aware of is your own energy, your own patterns, your own habits, but how you're also willing to grow, grow through your energy field and grow through your connections with other people. So with the 3D frequencies in relationships, there can be heaviness. There can be a lot more involved that no longer resonates. And I feel like this conjunction with Mars and Venus is taking us higher. It's taking us into these places that we haven't been before, but we're traveling with our experiences. We're traveling with our mastery. You're traveling with everything you've healed and moved through. You're traveling with your shadow and your healing patterns, your inner child, the stuff from your parents, but now it's all conscious. So a big part of 3D experiences and relationships has been to make parts of yourself more conscious so you're aware of it. So you can heal it. You know what it is. You know what the trigger is. You know what the wound is. Then you take that higher understanding of yourself and you're able to show up in these new connections and these new relationships with greater awareness of who you are, what you need, what you're about, and what is going to still show up for you. 
So when we talk about escalating energies, elevating energies, moving up into these new energy frequencies, we don't just leave behind everything we've been through, but we travel with it in a new way and it can feel lighter and clearer because you have more clarity around yourself, around what you've been learning and what's been showing up for you. So we move into the 5D. There are still things that will come up in relationships that need healing. There are the next level lessons, the next level energies. There is a requirement for honesty, for clear communication, for being able to discuss what you've been through in a loving, kind way that allows someone to know you more. There is a sense of the energies being more in balance. So whether you identify as being more masculine or more feminine, you could feel that you're more in balance, meaning you're more aware of what your heart needs. You're more aware of how your ego shows up. You're more aware of your wounds. You're more aware of your fears. And all of this can be things that you then discuss in relationships or connections in a new way or for the first time. Because part of 5D energies is that there's also more openness, more vulnerability, more strength, and a sense of a higher love for yourself where you could feel that with the right connections, the right people in your life, it's easier to share what you've been through. It's easier to share your wounding or your vulnerabilities or your fears. It's easier to talk about some things because there's also been this energetic separation between who you were in 3D unconscious experiences and now who you are in these more higher elevated conscious experiences. So it's all a journey of consciousness and it's rarely linear. It's a spiral. It's a zigzag. It's parts of ourselves that we're aware of and then we forget and we come back to. It's understanding, oh, this is my shadow showing up. Oh, this is my ego coming through. So you're more aware of how your energy works and that's how these 5D connections are different. So with Mars and Venus traveling together in Capricorn, there is greater mastery over your energy, greater responsibility, higher understanding. You could also feel like like you're much more in touch with what you need and what you can offer and give. Now, Capricorn is associated with our purpose in the world, our job, our profession, our career, how others see us. It's an area of life where we are viewed or recognized, and this is going to be different for all of us. But essentially, Mars and Venus in Capricorn also highlights how you show up in the world how you connect with people through that energy of personal integrity, self-respect, and requirements, requirements around what you allow into your energy and what you do not. Mars and Venus in Capricorn like the keyword qualifications. Are they qualified? Is someone qualified to be in my space? Do I want them to consciously be in my energy to connect with them? And so keep in mind the Capricorn energies really highlight your work environment, your professional role or space. So this alignment, this conjunction can bring in people that you're meant to work with or connect with in your job at work. Also, it could show you how to maintain more of your own feminine and masculine energies as you go about your purpose, as you show up and fulfill your duties and obligations. Where if you've been too assertive, let's say, with the Mars energy, you've been too intense maybe for others, you're going to have the ability to step back and soften and allow for others to show up and come through. That's part of the Venus in Capricorn that will allow more people to be heard or more people to have a voice at the table. So these energies together are going to highlight not only what you're aware of within yourself, 
again, your own mastery and how you take that energy out into the world, how you show up in your job, in your professional role, who you work with, how you work with others is also highlighted here. And yes, this can be in a professional capacity. However, we're always sharing energy. You're always sharing energy with people all around you. So it's your ability to understand your own dynamics that will affect those relationships and the course that they take. And so if you've been very feminine in your approach, or you've been very allowing, very compassionate, very aware of what other people need, now this Mars energy coming through is going to help you with your own ability to assert yourself, to stand up, to feel more confident, to know what you need to do or express. So that's where this balance is showing up within each of us, is that you're going to be able to look at where your energy's at, if it's in balance and how it is serving you, how it's really helping you move things forward. Now, in the previous show where I did the part one of this Mars-Venus conjunction, we talked about relationship skills and how that's something that needs to be developed and worked on, that not everyone just has relationship skills. And in fact, we can be moving through relationships at a very unconscious level of our being. We can be dating or meeting people or in a marriage or in a long-term connection. And that doesn't mean the relationship energies are always growing and evolving. They can be stagnant. They could be stuck. Capricorn is the energy of initiation. It's the energy of bringing something forward that is seen and viewed and public. Uh, this is the energy of taking responsibility for yourself in a whole new way. So there's an energy too here of something new beginning, and that can be within the same relationships you have. Because I know many of you, you're in marriages, you're in commitments, you're already with people. But this energy is working with you to help these energies grow, to help these connections grow, to help the relationships be more in balance. It can open up healthier exchanges. It can also help you see what you're ready to develop next, what skill set or what parts of your energy are ready to grow and flourish. Because again, there's this initiation energy with Capricorn. So yes, it can be new energies coming in, but it also can be a sense of new start or a fresh beginning in current connections as well. And it's almost like sitting down at the table and having a really good conversation or really getting into the heart of some things that you want to do next in a relationship. You know, where are we going together? What is important to us as a couple or in this relationship? There's things that are going to come forward that will require you to see them, to talk about them and to get on the same page. Now, I realize everyone has different situations going on, so of course, just take what resonates. But understand that this conjunction between Mars and Venus, the way that they're traveling together for a number of weeks is rare, and the fact that they enter Aquarius together is also rare. I feel like these are the energies taking us further into the age of Aquarius. This is the divine masculine, divine feminine energies assessing where they've been, understanding what they've learned, having a mature perspective even on where you have not shown up, where you have not been that partner or that balanced individual in connections. This is also where you take responsibility for what you're ready to learn next, what is important to you going forward. And there's always this focus on time with Capricorn, the timing of our lives, the time we put into something, the time that we invest. And so there can also be an appreciation for the time you have on the planet, the time you have in this life. What do you want to do with your time here? How do you want to spend your time in relationships, in connections with others? So this is quite big because of how it's working with the Capricorn energies starting at 14 degrees in your chart. So you'd be looking at where 14 degrees of Capricorn is. That's where Mars and Venus first meet up through an exact conjunction. Then they travel together, as I said, into the middle of March, where together they get to about eight degrees of Aquarius. And then they begin to separate and they're only separating by two or three degrees. Then by the end of March, oh, and I mean March, I don't know if I just said April, but they separate by the end of March and they are 
six degrees apart. So they're entering into the age of Aquarius together. This feels like a very strong energy imprint. It feels like we're really getting clear on what relationships mean to us based on who you are now. I'm also feeling a very strong energy here that is about elevating yourself to a higher place that honors your own journey, your own consciousness. And I feel like if there are connections, relationships, or old patterns that no longer resonate with you, you're going to feel that. You're going to feel the shift in the connection. You're going to feel like we're really not on the same page. We're really not going in the same direction. Our energy isn't growing together. And you're going to sense that. Because with this clear connection here between Mars and Venus, we're having clarity within ourselves, greater clarity on what it means to be ourselves, to show up in the world and to share who we are from a place of really honoring what you've been through, really loving yourself in a much higher way. And then that's what comes through. So I feel like there's going to be this very strong separation even of connections that aren't the same energetic fit. And this can happen in so many ways, but it's going to feel different. You're going to sense that you're on a different path or that you're looking for different things in connections. So there's a few things here that are important to note. As we move into these energies even more, Mars and Venus are going to be at zero degrees of Aquarius together, March 6th and 7th, which is, of course, the point of the Great Conjunction when Saturn and Jupiter began a new synodic cycle together in December 2020. And so now with both Mars and Venus conjunct, they're also traveling together in a new way, opening up these frequencies within us. And I feel like we're tapping into our own higher consciousness around relationships we've experienced in other realms, in other places, other planets, other timelines. We know that the Aquarius energy is very quantum. It takes us out of the linear energy experience, opens us up to what's all around. It feels like a 360 degree opening. That's what I'm feeling around this Mars and Venus conjunction in Aquarius is that it's expanding us at quantum levels and helping us see more than we've even noticed before. So it feels quite big. I feel like there's going to be even new messages and transmissions coming in from other realms around what relationships can be, what healthy relationships can be. Even if you're in a healthy relationship now or a really good solid partnership, these are downloads coming through that show us even more, show us how we're meant to keep expanding and raising our consciousness. And through the balanced yin and yang exchange, through these connections that we are working on internally, but we're also then experiencing them externally. And I do feel like part of this conjunction is an opening into more relationship energies. And that's because of how now the North Node is in Taurus and Taurus is ruled by Venus Venus connecting with Mars. Mars is a trigger and an activator. So Mars is bringing energies in that are activating more of the Venus expansion, the Venus beauty and creativity and love and the harmony. So I feel like when we look at how much the world has been closed down, In the past number of years, the lockdowns, the quarantines, all the things, how that also slowed down connections. It stalled out our ability to be out in the world, to meet people, to make those connections in the ways that we need to. Because something that's also vital here about these 5D experiences or these higher energies is that you need to feel someone's energy. You need to be in their presence or in their aura. It's not okay to just be on a screen or be on the digital experience because you don't feel all of the energy. So, so much of moving into these higher frequencies is being in those personal connections, being in someone's auric field and having these in-person energy exchanges. 
which is also about the Capricorn energies because Capricorn is an earth sign about the physical reality and really taking stock and understanding what is. Now, I realize Aquarius is very much about technology and the screens and the digital experiences and social media and the apps. And all of that can also be activated But these higher frequency energies are different. It's why it could feel unsatisfying to meet people through certain channels or ways because you're not feeling all of their energy. And now we are much more open. We are more multi-sensory than ever before. And it's very important to have that experience of someone's energy field. So I feel like with this conjunction, it's opening up more connections. It's activating the relationship energies on the planet that have been dormant and closed down for a few years, especially. It's helping us open up to more of this. Again, I'm seeing it as a 360 degree energy field around your whole body around your full aura that is being activated and coming alive. And this is where you could also feel that there's new things you're attracted to or that you're looking for that matter to you that didn't matter to you previously. And this Mars Venus conjunction as they move from Capricorn into Aquarius is taking us into the Aquarius age, taking us into the age of Aquarius where things are different, where things are new, where you could be now bringing in or attracted to certain things that you weren't attracted to before. And there's something expansive about it. It's helping you grow and learn, but it's also helping you see more of who you are, what your needs are, and what it means to you to have relationship energies in a frequency that matches. And this is where you'll also be turned off or no longer interested in things that are not of that same frequency. And that's going to be part of this conjunction as well, where things don't match, where they're not synergistic and where they're not really on the same growth trajectory. And so this reminds me of a story I know I've told you previously, I can't remember if that was a year and a half ago or so, where I was in a brewery, I'm hanging out with a bunch of friends, I was married, I was pregnant, I was six months pregnant, I was so hungry, and I was just talking with a bunch of people, one of whom was my friend Mike. And Mike is now married, and he has, I believe it's two kids, and what I wanted to share with you about Mike, that he gave me permission to share, was how different his energy was at that time. So this was six or seven years ago, and he was very much in the 3D experiences of relationships, of dating, of just connecting with people. And he is very, very good looking. He's a really good guy. I only have nice things to say about him. But he also was just going through the motions. He was also just trying to play it as a numbers game. That was his dating strategy. And he and I had a conversation about how my perspective was it's more about energetics than the numbers. And if you're really committed to a certain energy or in that energy, it changes who you connect with and who you bring in. And so he being a very good looking guy, he had a lot of women chasing him. Uh, He showed me his phone with all these text messages of women who were really coming towards him, uh, very aggressive, a lot of energy, a lot of energy coming towards him. And I had asked him, do you find this attractive? Like, is this attractive to have all these women coming towards you? And he said, well, I don't care. It's really easy. It's easy sex. It's easy to connect with people. It's just easy. But he wasn't invested. He wasn't serious about it. He didn't have any kind of commitment energy around it. Um, His heart was really closed, like his heart chakra was really closed. And he was just in this place of, well, something here will maybe be something or it won't. So he was in this space of not doing his work, not really looking at his own energy and what was showing up. Um, We had some really good conversations about what he was moving through, about these people that he was interacting with. And I had asked him, not only did he find it attractive, and he really didn't, he was just going through the motions, but he wasn't, again, doing his work or self-reflecting on his own energy and what needed to shift and change. And it was working for him. And that's 
great, right? Like whatever works for people wherever they're at, they're entitled to whatever experiences they want to create or co-create. But he wasn't really happy. And he wasn't happy because he was so shut down. His energy was hard in places. It was like the heart chakra was really closed and his energy was really in his mind and in his head. And there wasn't a lot there that was even moving. So it's very stagnant. And we were talking about this one book as well. And this was one of these conversations that went in all these different directions. But the book was about masculine energy. And it was a book he had read too. And it's called The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. It came out a number of years ago. I remember reading it in like 2007 or 2008. And it was really triggering for me at first. But it was also really interesting to talk to him about it. It's a book that could even be interesting as a couple's therapy book. Um, So just throwing that out there. But it really highlighted the differences between masculine and feminine energies and what they're looking for in relationships and in how they connect. And so I really enjoyed hearing his take on it. And I feel like I learned a lot even from him. But I could also see where the energy was not connecting because I had shared with him that what he was looking for was in a different experience that he wasn't in because what he was bringing in was very different than what he really wanted. And the analogy that came through was that of a jewelry store where if you're walking down the street, you see a jewelry store and it has all its best and finest goods on display. The most beautiful diamonds, the most amazing shiny, bright creations. And so you're really pulled in and you're pulled into the jewelry store and you go in and it takes you a minute. And all of a sudden you're like, wait a minute, this is not a jewelry store. It's a dollar store. And that is what he was experiencing and what he couldn't figure out to change. He's like, I feel like I have some clarity on what I want. And we were discussing how, but the energy he was pulling in was not going to get him those real true diamonds or that fine jewel because he was so distracted by everything coming towards him instead of being very intentional and clear around what he wanted to co-create. And so then it was the understanding that he was ready for something new or different, but he didn't know how to change the energy. And he, again, he wasn't ready to do work on himself. And when someone isn't there, then you can only go so far. Because as we all know, there's things that you have to see in yourself. You have to shift. You have to move through. And that's the harder path. That's not the easy path. That's not just where you get a bunch of text messages because you're good looking and then you have all these options that aren't really what you want. He was not in this place of understanding his own energy, what he was co-creating, how his own energy is what needed to rise up. And frankly, I feel this is very relatable because this is how we make transitions from 3D experiences of relations into 5D experiences of relationships, where it always begins within us. We see our own crap. We see our own karma. We see our own loops and our own comfort zones. We see where we've limited ourselves, what we have to learn, what we have to heal, what our triggers are, what our wounds are. And so there's an energy here that begins within And sometimes it is that external catalyst that pushes us into these higher understandings and makes us do this work. But there are also reasons why we avoid it or reasons why we're not ready or it's not the right time. And so what we were talking about here in this conversation was that he felt like he kept going into dollar stores and he felt like he didn't see the habit, the pattern, the loop. And he had to do some work around that. And I'm not going to overshare his experience or his story with that. But it wasn't until a little bit later that he started doing some real work around that. And then it shifted. And then that's when he met someone who was a really beautiful, high quality woman who would never have been attracted to his behavior or energy previously. So he had shifted into this new version of himself by doing some of the work, even though he resisted it, he didn't want to, and he was ready to experience new results. Because I also had shared with him how, you know, if you're surrounding yourself with certain types of energies, it pushes away those higher energies, those other quality connections. Those aren't going to come in. Those aren't going to come in at all. 
And granted, I was a safe place to talk about this because I was married. I was pregnant. I was like, don't touch my food. I'm eating all of this. The baby's very hungry. But he was like, so just Molly, just let's just pretend. Would you ever be attracted to someone like me? And I thought that was a very courageous question to ask. And my answer was no. I would never take you seriously. I would keep you at a distance. I would not let you in because you're too much of a wild card. And feminine energy is looking for certain things, including safety, trust, consistency, reliability, like certain things that allows feminine energy to feel safe and okay to open. And there's things that we're assessing unconsciously. There's things that we're picking up on energetically. So for all the ways that you are amazing and fantastic and successful and good looking and a good person, the energy around you is not something that I would take seriously. And I said, and I share that with love. I mean that in a very respectful way, but I hope that helps to explain the differences and why some things don't connect and why some things do. Because for these higher 5D frequencies, there's things that you really need and want and things that you no longer are interested in. You wouldn't tolerate. You wouldn't put energy towards. You would just have this probably internal message that says, been there, done that. I can't do that again. I can't do that again to myself. My heart has been through enough. Or you understand what the loop is or what the pattern is. Perhaps you understand why you've brought in certain people on repeat or why you've had certain experiences that just keep looping. This is where in the 5D, we've removed a lot of baggage. We've lightened our load. We've gone through enough of the emotional process and experiences to not feel like we need people to show us parts of ourselves anymore or as much. So what I mean by that is a lot of the 3D experiences involve a lot of mirroring. They can involve a lot of work that shows us our limitations, shows us anything around parental issues. Uh, This is where in 3D you can see the mother issues or daddy issues that someone needs to work through any inner child issues. It's almost like the 3D is this beautiful playground for healing catalytic energy around your relationship dynamics. And as you do that work, as you move through it and you elevate yourself through it, you get to this higher platform, this higher place where you can see more of what you want and what's possible because you've cleared out and cleared away so much. And that's what I feel we're moving through in this current timeline. There's an activation of deeper relationship energies within each of us, within us where we've done so much healing and we're ready to have new experiences of relationships that honor who you are now. And again, it does require ongoing self-responsibility and ongoing work. So for example, especially in Capricorn, you could have a realistic understanding of when your inner child is triggered. And let's say you're in a conversation with somebody, you're on a date, you're doing something with your partner, whatever, and you get triggered. You're aware of, okay, this is my inner child and I understand what this is about. I'm going to take care of this internally. I'm going to take care of this issue. It's my responsibility. It's what's coming up for me. I'm going to be in charge of it. Then I'm going to share with this person what it's about, what I've been going through or feeling in a way that also has greater understanding around what I've been through. So you're essentially able to self-manage your energy feel better take responsibility, understand the dynamics, understand the triggers. You're not going to project it onto another person. You're not going to assume the other partner knows what's going on. There isn't the same patterns of blame or expectation or wanting someone else to do the work for you or save you or whatever it might be. I'm just throwing out examples here. But this is an understanding of You're always responsible for all of your energy. And when you show up in the world and in partnerships with that clarity, it changes the dynamic. It also changes how you relate to people. And again, going back to the people in your life, you start to see 
Who else takes responsibility for themselves? Who else is aware of how to manage their energy, how to honor their process, how to say, hey, I need a break to go think things through or move through something. I'll be back and share with you what's going on. It's that kind of thing where you're just more mature in how you're able to handle your energy. And that is where so many people are coming online, meaning we're coming energetically online with this new ability to move through the world with this skill set and to have a greater sense of command, command and control over what it means to share our energies. So there's a lot here. There's a lot here, but because it's how we're growing individually and collectively. And again, it's also showing us where we've kept developing our relationship skills, where we've stayed very conscious and aware of how we connect, how we show up, how we share our energies. And it feels very new, bright, shiny, sparkly. It feels like a beautiful evolution. You could feel that at a personal level. You could feel that in your self-respect. So going back to this little analogy about the jewelry store and walking in and thinking it's one thing and then realizing it's totally not, uh, what you could find is that sometimes what you're valuing or what you're seeking the most is also seeking you, is also looking for you at that same energy frequency, but that it's not going to be as in your face or it's not going to be something that is overly demonstrative. It might not be as showy. It could be something more grounded, more private, more hidden. And in fact, the Capricorn energy can also be the hermit. So it's almost like what you're seeking could be something you find off of a beaten path and what you look for that's not typical. This energy is not typical, meaning you could be attracted to people you've never been attracted to before. You could be feeling different energies or different connections that are very new. Again, something you haven't really been drawn to before could show up or something very different could come through, but it's an energy match. It's different than your previous experiences, but it's on par with your current energy and where you're going next. And this is part of the opening energy, part of what is opening up that we're meant to grow into and grow through. So instead of it being a giant corner jewelry store, for example, that looks very glamorous and shiny and has all the right things on the outside, this could be something where it's a discreet, smaller boutique jewelry store that doesn't even have a lot of marketing or a lot of advertising and you find it off of a beaten cobblestone path and it's like this prize. You know, have you ever been in your town or traveling and you come across something that just surprises you and it's so amazing and it's such a wonderful unexpected development because you were just trusting your intuition or you were just following a path that you haven't been through before. That's also what this energy feels like is that it's taking us into new places on these pathways we haven't been before, but that have something promising to offer you, that have new manifestations and new energies that could be a much better fit than what you've experienced before. And I think this is important to note because I know that many of you have been looking and seeking that partner, that long-term partnership, someone who's on your wavelength that you can grow with, who shares enough in their energy that matches your energy. And I feel like that's opening up now. I feel like that's part of what's shifting here, especially because that North node is in Taurus and then Mars and Venus conjunction are traveling together. Keep in mind that Mars is stronger right now in Capricorn. The masculine energy is going to be much more in command, much more direct and much clearer as Mars moves through Capricorn. Then they're both going to be in Pisces together. And that will be in April when Venus will be stronger. Venus is going to be very strong in Pisces in April, especially because we have an eclipse in Taurus and Taurus is ruled by Venus. So there could be an interesting dance here that you notice the masculine energy is stronger right now. And then in April, we're going to have a strengthening of the feminine energies. So we keep doing our work, we keep growing, we keep 
a higher awareness around our energies and how we're using our energies. And this is how we continue to evolve, not only internally, but in those that we connect with. And then this is also where there can be magical developments. And I feel that very strongly with both Jupiter and Neptune and Pisces, which brings through things that are ready to come up and out where we've been trusting, where we've been walking a blind path at times, doing our work, really aware of what we need. And there's things that can show up in a very surprising and unexpected way, simply because that energy is matching and it's in alignment. There's one more thing I want to share with you that just came through. It's about a movie that was made in the late 80s called Made in Heaven. And the movie poster is horrible. And I'll be very upfront that it's not the best movie in the world. Again, it's in the late 80s, so be very forgiving. But it has a beautiful premise. It stars Timothy Hutton and Kelly McGillis as two souls who know each other on the other side who are connected in the spiritual realms. And then they're both on the planet. They're both born and brought to earth and they are soulmates looking for each other, but they have to find each other before he turns 30. So how's that for your Saturn return? But he's not aware of that. He's not aware that he has to connect with her before he turns 30. And so this movie is essentially about soulmates who come to earth to find each other And that's the premise of the movie that I think is really sweet, even though, again, I'm not going to give it a five stars rating, but it's a sweet understanding perhaps of what you've been feeling. Anything that's been coming up for you, like you know someone is here for you to connect with or you can feel it, you can feel their energy. There could be something here that you're meant to tap into or remember around your own experience on the planet at this time. I also think... The premise of the movie involves the fact that she has not reincarnated onto Earth before. So it's fairly cute if you want to check it out. Again, Made in Heaven from the late 1980s. If you're looking for some type of sweet movie that has this premise of connecting with your soulmate in this lifetime or a soulmate because we have a lot of soulmates. So anyways, I hope that this information has been validating and supportive of your own healing journey and what you've been moving through in relationships. This upcoming conjunction between Mars and Venus is quite significant. In Capricorn, it is about responsibility, integrity, self-respect, ownership, and mastery of all of your energies. And of course, we will keep talking about this through both the Wednesday shows and some of the Monday special topic shows of this podcast. I will be back every Monday and Wednesday for a new episode. And every Friday, I release a new video for you on YouTube talking about a special astrology topic. Please check out my website over at mollymccord.online where you'll find all of my latest programs, courses, and offerings. And I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. One more thing to call out on Instagram, there have been a lot of these fake accounts. I've had at least six or seven fake accounts in my name. And I know that many of you have experienced them following you. I would never reach out to you asking you to have a reading with me in that way. These are fake accounts that are very active right now for many people. And the more that you can block and report them, the better. Hopefully it is a trend that will end fairly soon. But I just wanted to do yet another public announcement on them because I know they can be harassing as well as confusing. So thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to connecting with you again soon for our next podcast episode. Wish you the very best as we move through these bigger, brighter energies of this year. Take good care and I'll see you back here soon.